little cat just ran into the albergue. Hey, kitty, out of the trash. Psst, psst, psst. Kitty. Where did you come from? You just ran upstairs. Is she coming from outside? Okay, I have a new little friend. He likes my walking stick. Yeah. So behind me is the albergue in Molina Seca, just outside of Molina Seca, where I walked to yesterday. I made a, reser made a reservation there. When I arrived, it was totally quiet. The door was locked. There was a sign in the door that said to call a number. So I thought it was a little odd, so I called the number and I tried to explain that I had a reservation and I was there now. And the guy on the other end was saying something, but I couldn't really understand. So I just sat there, I'm like, oh, maybe they're gonna come and open up the albergue. <laughs> and I sat and I sat, and then a guy from inside came out and he's like, oh, what are you doing here? And he said, no, we have two albergues, this one's under renovation, or at least he said something like that. And so he was really, really nice. He was like, come with me. And we got in his car, we loaded up my pack, and my walking stick, and he drove me to the other albergue, which was like, honestly, not far. I just sort of had to double back into Molina Seca. But um, it's funny, it was very, very confusing. I don't know, I, when I made the reservation, maybe I didn't specify the name of the albergue, and I guess they own two. But in any case, <laughs> I got my way and found my way to the right albergue eventually yesterday. sitting on this bench in Ponferrada for maybe an hour trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with the Invierno. Oh, it just got really complicated. There's an albergue 16 kilometers from here that I was counting on staying in, but you have to call to get the key like dropped off to let them know you're gonna stay. And I called and called and called and no one answered. And I sent an email and that got bounced. And I don't know. So. I actually found an Airbnb that I'm gonna stay at like 12 kilometers from here and so I think it's gonna it's just like a room in someone's house but I think it'll work okay I was like at first I was so ready to give up because it just you know it's the weekend and I was checking all these places around like between like here and in the next 30 kilometers and like everything is booked um, yeah, it's a Friday night and it's August, so all of Spain is out, you know, on their holidays, so. But I think I got it to work and I have a place for tomorrow night, so. Okay, time to head out. I see it. The first official sign for the Camino de Invierno. All right, I found it. We're gonna be on our way. So funny thing, there's that bridge straight ahead. And I was there like two and a half, three hours ago because this is the way that I walked on the French way into Poncarada. I didn't realize I'm gonna have to double back for the Invierno. Oh well, it was okay to head into town and to stock up on food and get some coffee. So <laughs> now it's noon, heading back out on the Invierno officially. I like passed this marker this morning, didn't even realize it. You know, when I was leaving Ponferrada, well, maybe not leaving, when I finished my coffee and was headed to find a grocery store, I passed a pilgrim that I had met yesterday or two days ago, I guess, on the Frances, and she knew my plan to walk the Invierno, and she kind of like said, you know, you're so brave. She said, in a lot of ways, I'm so independent, but that I would never do to go off and walk on a route all alone. And she said, I really respect what you're doing. And, you know, I was kind of thinking, ah, oh, it's no big deal. Like, it's a Camino route. Other people have walked it. And it's, you know, not a huge deal. But <laughs> even just running into this little trouble right now, you know, it's, I'm like, you know, ready to walk today. I'm in Ponferrada at the start and realize, like, oh, I might not have a place to stay tonight. 
And then having to try to call places, you know, I also made a reservation for tomorrow night and I just had to call, you know, call the hotel and attempt to make a reservation. And I don't speak Spanish, you know, I can try to use translate, Google translate and do my best to pronounce these words. And I don't like talking on the phone as it is. And so to have to communicate in a language that I don't understand just adds a whole other level and I'm gonna to have to do that probably quite a bit on this route, but I think it's good. <laughs> I do, I think it's good for me. You know, I've walked a lot of Caminos and one thing that I often look for when I return to walk a new route is some kind of challenge or some kind of, yeah, like extra thing that can really help push myself. Sometimes it's a physical challenge, Sometimes, you know, when I walked in France, it was the language thing. Like I can speak French, but not super fluently. And it was just, that really kind of pushed and stretched myself. Sometimes socially, you know, I try to really push myself. So on this Invierno, it's, you know, I think it is gonna be really solo, but I think I'm gonna also have the opportunity, um, I don't know, to really, yeah, really kind of push myself in different ways. It feels really good to see El Jaros. I, I think this route has just felt a little strange, like like I'm going off on my own and there aren't a lot of albergues and in some ways it like maybe doesn't feel like I'm heading off on a Camino, but like look, that's the Camino, this is a Camino. So very encouraging to know that this way is way marked and that I am going the right way. Right now this path is climbing a bit and it's looking out onto a really nice view over Pont Ferrara. Oh, the route's going by these lovely vineyards up on the hillside. This walk so far is really beautiful. I'm going right through this land with vineyards and orchards. Yeah, the path goes just through here. It's really quiet. It's also a beautiful day, so this is good walking. It might rain tomorrow, so tomorrow might look a little different, but for now, I'm gonna soak up this sunshine and enjoy these views a lot. Oh, I really love this path and these views. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so green. And walking by these vineyards, oh, with all these grapes, it's just really great. Very, very pretty day. Somehow, I accidentally locked my sim. <laughs> And so, I don't know, I can't figure out how to unlock it. I finally found the passcode, but anyway, hopefully some Wi-Fi, I can get it. But now I'm in the village and I have to find this Airbnb, but I can't really look up the directions on my phone because my SIM is locked. Ugh. All right, it's gotta be here somewhere. This is the little seating area outside. Oh, it's the most beautiful place I've ever seen. 